Hi everyone, this is El Gata up in Lexington, Kentucky, and this video describes the process I went through to convert my 1939 Dodge Brothers half-ton pickup truck to be an all-electric vehicle. This is part one of three and describes all of the repairs that I made to the sheet metal parts of the truck as well as to the frame. This is a general view of the old truck when I started. Um, I cleared off 20 years accumulation of things and stuff that I piled on top of the truck and in the truck and that was a major chore all by itself. Anyway, I got it down to so you could actually see the truck and uh, I'll give you a little tour here. This is the original engine. Uh, the truck is a 39 but that engine happens to be a 1952. So someone swapped out the engines over the years. Here of the inside of the cab. Notice on the right hand side the high quality bench seat with uh, duct tape, uh, straw, and some padding. And for all the decades that I've had that truck, uh, most of the pieces parts sat in these four crates uh, aging nicely I might add. Then, as if by magic, three and a half years later uh, this is what I drove out of my garage, a fully functional all-electric truck. This is the bed of the truck. There was a piece of plywood in there when I got it. Uh, that's long gone. You can see the drive shaft against the left-hand side of the, of the bed. And um, once again, as if by magic, that became this. Uh, I cheated. That's oak plywood. But the strips are, are real. Those are stainless steel uh, strips. And so, to continue the disassembly of the truck, out comes the engine. I kept the transmission and the clutch and bell housing assembly because I wanted to reuse them. And as if by magic, and a lot of hard work, uh, this is what I produced. The right hand red thing is the electric motor. And going to the left, there is the bell housing for the clutch and then finally the transmission. That's the thing with a cover missing on top. Uh, it weighed about 400 pounds total. But anyway, back to reality. Here I am power washing the frame. And the reason the frame is yellow is because in New York State I rented a commercial sandblaster and I sandblasted the frame and underside of all the sheet metal down to shiny metal. And then I hand painted uh, a zinc chromate primer on it to preserve it over the years. And it did a pretty good job. The frame was very dirty when I was power washing it, but uh, there was no rust or anything else like that on the frame. It uh, survived uh, pretty good. Then what I did, I took the frame and I gave it two coats of Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer with a brush. That is to really work the paint into the metal. And so, after crawling around under the frame for a couple of days painting, uh, it looked like this. I've, I've got it out in the sun to dry and the next step is going to be to paint it with the uh, Rust-Oleum High Gloss Black Paint. I put that on with a spray gun and I put on two coats and here's one view of the uh, frame and here's the other view of the frame. This is really a turning point because from this point on I start putting things back onto the frame as opposed to taking them off. This next picture shows some worn shackles. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the second item from the right, see how terribly worn it is? I don't think some of that stuff got greased for a hundred years. Anyway, these are on the back spring. They attach the spring to the chassis, and I had to drill out the old assembly. And those four holes you see there, they, are, uh, they were riveted on. And boy, those rivets were tough. So when I put it back on, of course, I couldn't rivet it. But what I did do was I got some Category 8 bolts. You can see them sitting up on top of the rail. And those are, like, incredibly tough. Uh, they're very, 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 very strong. And so I put them back on with that. And hopefully uh, they'll never come loose. And here you see uh, the finished product. Uh, there's a three bolts you can see, and there's one underneath. It's all painted up really nice, and uh, you can't tell that I replaced it. Uh, it was very easy to get the parts and all. And then we went into bodywork. 
and we did body work for a year and a half between the cab, the fenders, the body, the, the or the bed, and everything else. It just went on forever. That pink stuff you see toward across the bottom there, <clears throat> that's Bondo. Uh, what you do is you take it, you rough up the hole, uh, and then you put mix up the Bondo. It's like epoxy. And you put the Bondo in the hole, you wait a half hour, and then you come back and you can sand it off perfectly smooth with the rest of the uh, sheet metal. And then all of this, all of these louvers, I had to go in there with a wire wheel and get all the paint out from between the louvers. And uh, that was a tedious, long process. Well, eventually, we got all the paint out, and it all looked nice and shiny. And so uh, we primered it. And the next picture here is the primer that I put on the back side of the nose. That whole thing is called the nose, by the way. Uh, so I got it all primered, front and back. And for a long time, I was just painting stuff and putting it out in the sun to dry. And, you know, just keep puttering at it and keep, keep working on it. And eventually, uh, we got everything primered. And then we got everything painted. And uh, here's another example of rust. The top thing that looks like Swiss cheese, that was the running board support. And so I made new ones. I welded up new ones. I, got, I made uh, six of them. So that's running boards in really good shape. Speaking of rust, this is an example of what I did on almost all the rust everywhere. Um, this is the uh, lower front part of the driver's door. at the classic place where these cars rust out. I stood the thing up on a, on, a, on a fixture so I could work on it. And you clean out all the rusty parts back down to sound metal. And then you weld in a plate uh, that's bigger than the hole. And after the plate is welded in, you grind down all them little bumps you see to make it smooth with the rest of the sheet metal. And then you apply Bondo or uh, JB Weld or whatever you're going to use to fill things in. So the lower left-hand corner of the door, that's where that hole was that I showed you. Also notice I've taken off the door handle. This is, a, again, a typical day here. I'm, looks like I'm painting fenders black today. Uh, I just waited until I got good sunshiny days and just did the work outside. And here I'm prepping the cab. Uh, once you're all set and you think you're going to start painting, you got to wash it down with soap and water to get all the grease and other things that have accumulated on it off. I still have to primer the doors, but once they were primered, I painted the whole thing red, and this is what it looks like. This was a, uh, a really good feeling because I was really making progress now on the reassembly of the whole thing. Next here is the bed of the truck and uh, that didn't require too much work. It was pretty sound except for the floor which was just all rotted out. And so uh, that after some uh, hard work became this all painted red. And there's a lot of other details on there. You can see the motor and uh, the, the clutch and the brake pedals. Then later on it became it looked like this. Uh, tires are a little wrong color, but we're going to take care of that later. And you remember this when it was all uh, shiny because I had wire wheeled it down. Notice the two shiny things in the top louver on the black part. Those are daytime running lights. But eventually um, all the body work came together producing a truck that looks like this. Uh, there's a lot of drivetrain components and other major things that are missing. And those are covered in the next two segments of this video. Uh, the first, or the second segment, uh, is about the, all the mechanical work I had to do to uh, interface the motor, to the adapter plate, to the flywheel, to the transmission, uh, and the drive shaft, and all of that stuff uh, that has to do with the drivetrain. And the third segment is the installation of all of the uh, electrical components, the battery chargers, the controller, the wirings, the battery uh, instrumentation. So there's a lot more interesting video ahead if you're interested. Then at the end of a long day working on the old truck, I would take my chair, <coughs> sit it 
uh, out just outside the garage, which faces west, and I would watch one of these lovely Kentucky sunsets. Right.